What a name. What a beautiful name. What a wonderful name. Boy, you think back just for a moment in your life when you met Jesus. When he came into your life, when he changed your life, when he touched your family as he's touched my family and other families and, and people just cry out to him and, and he runs to them and, and he wants to heal and he wants to bless and he wants to show favor and he wants to guard and he wants to protect and he wants to provide. He wants to be everything to you and me this morning. His grace is sufficient as I preached not long ago and I live and walk in his grace and I love his grace, his mercy, that grace that flows from Emmanuel's veins there on that cross where he hung and died for me and you so that we could have these very moments like this this morning where we could feel his presence. I know the world don't understand. The world don't understand the importance of gathering in a church. They don't understand the fellowship. They don't understand Jesus. They don't understand his peace and his joy and his hope. And I pray this morning if they're watching online, they'll feel it come right through that internet service. Oh, ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Ain't it good to be saved, Brother Andy? Ain't it good to know Jesus? Experience Him every day of your life. It's good all the time. I got a message on my heart for you. Been on my heart all week long. I wrote it down last Sunday in the subtitle and didn't even mention it. And I was thinking about it. I thought, Lord, I didn't even mention it. I realized why, because it was for this morning. It was for today. Obedience will lead you to opportunity. Obedience will lead you to opportunity. This morning, have you been obedient to the Spirit of the Lord? Have you really? Some of you have been more than obedient, ain't you? But some of you come here today and, and you're just being obedient and coming. If it's your first Sunday back with us, we welcome you. It is good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Obedient. If we could just be obedient this morning, just let the Spirit of the Lord move in our midst from one to the other. Anybody got a testimony? Anybody? Amen. He and he worked. And I want to thank you for saving my soul. I want to thank you. If I had nothing else to thank you for, I've got enough to thank you for what he brought me from. Amen, sis. You know, and I just thank you. I can't testify in this enough. And I thank you that he's a provider. When I'm down to nothing, he's always up to something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. Sure. You can't use my mic, but. Guys, I just want to say. Scott Myers was anointed, and there's a lot of people been worried and thinking about the way the condition and things going on in church. I want to tell you, I was told a long time ago, what you need to build at this church is good, faithful, kind men. Amen. There was, 12, there was 12 or 15 men down here when we had that anointing service, and the spirit of God and the spirit of prayer was here, and things were moving, and if you couldn't feel the Lord, well, you might be somewhere else, I'm telling you. And I'm just proud of this church. Amen. No doubt about what's going on. I know the world's in a crazy place right now. But our church ain't in a crazy place. Amen. You hear me? Our church is moving forward through strong men, through strong women, through praying, through through everything that is of the Lord. So I'm just proud to be part of this church, proud to be where we can bring our cares and our troubles and, and Amen. That we have to get lay it before the Lord's feet at this altar. So if you've been worried, don't worry. Amen. I can tell you, I can feel it in my heart. We're going forward. 
We got strong men. There were 12 or 15 years of this, and all of them wasn't even here. Yeah. We got a bunch of strong praying men in this church, and this church is fine. I'm proud to be here today. And the thing that I love the most, I feel like everybody's on one accord. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Anybody else? Just be obedient. Okay. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. He is perfect in all his ways. Obedient. We're obedient. Yeah. That's how they announce him when he stepped from the midst of the four beasts. There was this lamb that had looked as though it was slain, but he was announced as the lion of Judah. Amen. And that's how he's coming back. He's not coming back. Amen. He's coming back. Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else now? Just be obedient. Go ahead, brother. Amen, brother. Amen. Thank you, Brother McDaniel. It's good to see you. Amen. We've been praying for you, Marie. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're thankful you're here. Amen. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Love you, church. Each and every one of you. I'm so glad you made it out this way this morning. I'm so glad you're with us. I'm going to try to preach just a minute. <clears throat> Obedience leads to opportunity. I want to talk to you this morning about King Saul. King Saul, the first anointed king of Israel. King Saul was head and shoulders above everybody else in Israel. And God called him to be the king of Israel. And he gave him a new heart. And he changed Saul. And Saul was a, a king of Israel before David come along. And, and Saul had a problem, though. Saul's number one problem, as you read about him, is he had a problem with obedience. And it's not unlike a lot of us. We all have sometimes a problem with obedience. We're seeing a rebellious spirit in our country today. And part of that is because there is a lack of obedience. 
there's been a lack of teaching, as the brother said, down through the years. And, and I stated it here early on. This thing didn't just start last week, last month, or six months ago. This problem in our country has been growing for a long, long time. And it's because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities and wickedness in high places. That ain't changed from Paul's day, and it's the same today. So don't feel down and out. Don't be defeated by what you see going on, just knowing whom you have believed. You believe in the Lamb of God. You put your trust in Jesus Christ. He is our Lord, and He is our King. And you be obedient to Him, and it will be all right in your life. In your life. We can't do anything about a lot of what's going on except pray, believe in Jesus Christ, and then vote. Thank God we still get to vote in this country. We still get to vote. And I say to this, pray about who you vote for. Ask God to lead and guide you in how you vote. Because know you this, one day we'll give an account for how we vote. People don't like to think about that. If you vote for a platform that is for defunding the police, doing away with law and order, letting rebelliousness rule the day, the survival of the fittest, if you will, you're going to give an account for that. If you will vote, if you will vote for a platform that glorifies the shedding of innocent blood, you will give an account for that. And I want you to know the blood will be dripping from the fingers of those that commit these atrocities. It is against God's law and rule to kill the innocent, unborn children of this country. I used to think years ago, where was the church, Lord? Where was the church when this stuff was voted through? I'll tell you where the church was. The church was preaching the gospel. The church was working hard, living right, doing their best. And that's why they don't put all this stuff out there for me and you to vote on in that shape and manner. They don't do it. They tried it in California. They put it on the ballot box out there. Gay marriage. They put it on the ballot box. Guess what happened? They thought, sure, they could get it through California. It failed. You know what they did? They circumvented. They done, what do you call it, Brother Craig? They done the end around. And you know what they did? They went against we the people, and they went to a judge, and they found some judges that would vote the way they wanted them to. And that's how they got it started. That's what they'll do in our country. That's what they do do. They go around we the people. You think if they put some of this stuff on the ballot box and it was truthful and honest and counted and tabled right, that those things would be defeated, wouldn't they? I believe that. So we're to pray for our government, pray for our officials. But I tell you this much, you pray for your church and you pray for your pulpit that God will put somebody that'll preach the truth to these young people all the days of their life. <laughs> Nothing but the truth. So help us, God. I said it last week. They may flag us. Well, let them flag us. We're a city set on a hill, ain't we? I tell you what, I ain't ashamed of Jesus Christ. I ain't ashamed of the flag of Christ. I ain't ashamed of the flag of America. I ain't ashamed to stand with my hand over my heart and say I pledge allegiance to this thing. I love this country. I went and fought for this country. I believe in what she stands for. And she's built on Jesus. She's built on Jesus. I don't care if they get sick of hearing it. I don't care if they tear down every historical thing they can find. But she's built on Jesus. That's the only reason we've made it this far. Because we're built on Jesus. In church, we're built on Jesus. How in the world does a church go through what we've been through in the last year and a half or two years and still be standing and praising God, seeing the altar work, seeing souls saved, seeing lives baptized? Because we stand on Jesus. Amen. Woo! Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Let her flow. Let her rain down. Fill us with mercy and grace. Give us everything we need, Lord, to stand in this wicked day. And we're going to stand, church. We're going to stand. We ain't afraid. We ain't afraid because we know Jesus. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the captain of the Lord's host. I tell you what, Joshua seen him, didn't he? He said, are you on the Lord's side? He said, I'm the captain of the Lord's host. I'm with you, church. Be obedient. 
Be obedient. If I get too loud, they can turn me down. Whoo. I've been running. I've been running all week. I've been running all week, Brother Rob, because I knew I was like, Lord, I'm going to have my breath this Sunday. Obedient. Don't you want to just be obedient? Just obedient to the Lord. Obedient to his calling. Obedient at work. Obedient at school. Obedient everywhere you go. Just obedient. Let God lead you, guide you, and direct you. And you'll win somebody to Christ in this world we live. You'll win somebody to Christ because they'll see you and they'll want what you've got. Mm. Glory, 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 glory. That's my story, that song says. Glory, oh my, my, my. Glory, glory, glory. That's my story, that songwriter sang. Oh, I love that. Glory, glory, glory. But look here, this is what happens. I've told you what can be and what can happen if we're obedient. But there's another side to that. If you're obedient, you are a prince or a princess in the Lord. You are. But if you are disobedient, if you do things your way, your way will lead you astray. Your way will get in front of God's way. Your heart, don't be led just by your heart. You want your heart and your mind to line up with this right here. And you follow it with all of your heart and it'll be all right. It'll work out. You'll be obedient because if you're not obedient, trouble's coming. Our country is seeing that. We've kicked God out of everything. Took him out of school. Took him out of the churches in a lot of places. It's just three points in a, in a poem. I heard one buddy of mine say one time. He said, I like going to church over there. He said, I know where you go, TJ. They preach fire and hell and brimstone and judgment. I said, yes, yes, we do. It ain't all we preach, but yeah, we preach judgment. I said, where they preach where you go? He said, three points in a poem. He said, makes me feel good inside. He said, they don't preach the do's and don'ts. That's what he said. You know what I said? I said, that sounds pretty good to live this life by, but that ain't nothing to die by. That ain't nothing to die by. Thank you, Brother Elvis. Saul. Look what happened to Saul. I want to read this really quick. Man, I've been throwing this Bible around. I about lost myself. I'll just tell it to you. Samuel showed up. Saul had not been obedient in the destroying of Agag the king and, and the Amorites. God told him to destroy them all. Destroy the flocks. Destroy everything. Don't you bring nothing back. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. It's right there in Samuel 14, I believe it is, or 13. But he didn't do it right. And he brought back the king and he brought back some of the spoils. And Samuel shows up, the prophet of God. And Samuel, Saul said, I did what God told me to do. And Samuel said, what is this bleeding I hear in my ear? In other words, he could see and hear that Saul had not done what God commanded him to do. And he's in trouble because of it. And Samuel, he tells Samuel, he said, well, the reason I did it is because of the people. The people wanted to do this. He blamed the people. He's the king. Let's be honest. The buck stops there, don't it? He's the king. He's the one. That's where, that's where it stops at. But he tried to blame the people. And then, but it didn't matter. He said, and by the way, we're going to sacrifice to the Lord. We're, we brought all this back so we could make a big sacrifice. I want to tell you something. Saul should have learned the first time, Brother David, that he made a sacrifice without the blessing of the prophet and without God on his side. You can read about it a few chapters earlier. See, he didn't learn. A lot of times, folks, we don't learn. We don't learn from past mistakes. We don't learn from what we did wrong. So we end up doing it again and again and again. We end up committing iniquity, turning aside from the straight path. Why? Because we like darkness rather than light. We don't want it brought to light. 
But I say we, I say that by meaning the world. I believe here this morning, you want it brought to light. If you ain't walking with the Lord, you want to know it. You want to be sure. You want to be right with God. You want to have right standing with God. When you go to sleep tonight and when you wake up in the morning, you want to know in whom you have believed. You want to know that you know that you know that you're saved, don't you? That's why you're here this morning. Because you love God. Not because you love me, which I hope you do, but because you love God and you love this church. And you do what is obedient. You do it to the best of your ability. But Saul didn't do that. And Saul did what he wanted to do. And Samuel told him. He said, well, I'm going to sacrifice. And this is what I want you to take home with you. Samuel said to obey. To obey the Lord is far greater than sacrifice. And the reason for that is, is because as Saul did, you can sacrifice unto the Lord and not be obeying the Lord. But if you are obeying the Lord, your sacrifice will line up with what God wants. That's obedience. And that obedience leads to opportunity. If you're obedient to God, he will give you opportunities. He will open doors for you. He will walk with you and teach you in all his ways, lead and guide and direct your life and bless you beyond measure. The Bible said he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you, Belmont. I believe God is opening the windows of heaven and blessing us today. That's what I believe. He's looking for a church that's going to stand He's looking for us. I like this. Every now and then, I like to think about this. God is in search of a worshiper. He's looking for somebody that'll worship him. He's looking for somebody that'll lift their hands and praise his holy name without wrath or fear or doubting because he is worthy of praise. Just be obedient. If you just be obedient, next thing you know, you'll be running. You'll be like Sister Calvert was a couple Sundays ago. You just jump to your feet and go to testifying. You'll be like Brother Andy and his lovely wife did today. You'll come to the altar and just pour your heart out to God. That's what you'll do. You don't worry about what anybody thinks till you get home. If you're like me. Boy, when I'm here and this pulpit's on fire, I just say whatever God wants me to say. And then I get home and go, did I really say that? Then I watch it the next day and go, yes, I did. Woo. Bless the Lord. If God's in it, it's right, ain't it? If God's in it, it's right. It'll be right every time. Just be obedient. If you're obedient to the Lord, parents, you will raise your children in the honor and the glory and the admonition of the Lord. If you're obedient this morning, you'll be praying about putting your children in BCA. You say, well, I might not do that. You may not, but be obedient. Seek God in it. I can tell you this. Me and Rhonda, we made a lot of decisions for our children down through the years. Some of them good, some of them not so good. I can tell you the best one we ever made. We put them in Belmont Christian Academy. Just like some other people I know put their girls in Oak Ridge Christian Academy. I tell you what, you look at the fruit of that labor. I tell you what, they know the Lord. They know the Word of God. It's like uh, Sister Whitney said here, uh, Brother Dole and Sister Renee's daughter, who's done went on to be with Jesus. We know where Whitney's at, and one day we'll go and see her. I tell you what, we know where she's at, because I heard her say this. She said, you know what, going to school here didn't, doesn't make sure that I will always do the right thing, but it made sure I'll know the right thing to do. Man, that's all we can do, ain't it? That's all we can do is train them and teach them and show them the right thing to do. Be a light. Be a witness. Be obedient. Be obedient as this church is in tithes and offerings. Be obedient. I've heard it said, we couldn't do this. We couldn't do this without the blessing of God. We could, I've had people tell me, oh, what a beautiful church. I'm like, boy, you ought to come to it. You ought to come to it. One guy told my dad, he said, oh, that's that church over there where them rich people go. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we are rich. 
We are rich in faith. We're rich in mercy. We're rich in love. We're rich in God. We're rich in power and strength and His might. We are wealthy, folks. And our bank accounts look pretty good, too. And if yours don't, we'll be praying for you. Listen, let me tell you the truth. If you've got food on the table, you've got raiment to wear, you've got a vehicle to drive, you've got a lawnmower that you don't have to push, I'm telling you, you are wealthy. I used to push mow. I even tried one of them for a while. I think my papa had one of them, didn't even have a motor on it. I told you my papa used to say, somebody needs to mow the yard. He didn't have a zero turner. He'd have had little old grandchildren waiting in line to get on that thing. We're wealthy. We're wealthy in all the right ways. There ain't nothing wrong, by the way, with working hard and doing good. Thank God, look at our church. There ain't nothing wrong with working hard and doing good and giving to the Lord because he'll pay back many fold over. Many fold. You can't outgive God. You can't do it. Give him your children. I tell you what, give him your marriage. Just give it to him. When you don't know what to do, when you don't know what to say, hold your tongue and give it to the Lord. Wait on God. That's a hard thing to do, ain't it? Wait on God. Because I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I like to poke back. I do. Thank God, me and my wife, we don't do much of that anymore. We don't do much of that anymore. Ain't much of that bickering going on. Why? Because Jesus is the center of our home. His forgiveness and mercy and grace flows from our home right into our church, right into our daily lives because we try to be obedient to God. We try. And I tell you something else. Don't get separated. Don't get separated, church. Don't think you can get out on this world and in this world by yourself. Don't think you can handle the devil on your own. I'm telling you, you need God, you need Jesus, and you need a church just like this one to come along beside you and pray with you and pray for you and bless you in the name of the Lord. We need each other. We need each other. Never been a time. I heard a pastor this week. He said, never seen a time like this. He's a pastor of a large church. I'm talking thousands upon thousands go there and listen to him. And he said, I ain't never seen no more trying time than this for the church of Jesus Christ in America. I'm telling you what, people are going their own way. People are not thinking about what's important at the end of the day, and that's to walk with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you what, they tell us now that 30% of the 100% that used to come to church, that was actually 15% of our population, is in church today. Did those numbers blow by you real quick? 30% of the 100% of the people that claim to go to church regularly is back in church this morning. And of that 30%, of that 100%, only 15%, they tell us in America, actually go to church. Think about where our numbers are. Think about where our numbers are. God is blessing this place. God is richly blessing this place. We're above 30%. I don't really know the percentage, but we're over 30. I promise you that. And it's because of the Lord. It's because of Jesus Christ. It's because of the love of God that's in this place. It's because that when people drive by this church, they've told us they sense and feel the presence of God when they drive by. If you ain't just drove by, next time you drive by, just kind of look over here. And you'll think, oh my goodness, what has God built right there? A beautiful, beautiful place to come and worship him. Men have labored, women have labored that we might have what we have today. I just happen to be lucky enough to be here. Some of y'all are brand new. Some of you just arrived. I'm telling you what, we're glad you're here. God has brought you here. Jesus Christ. And, and we had a vision at this church, a vision that we might have a place that could seat 650 or 700 and have a school and have a ministry that would work at this church five, six days a week. And thank God we've got that. But we ain't quitting. We ain't quitting. Somebody say, well, what's next? So what's he talking about? My wife's looking at me right now like, what are you doing? 
<laughs> Knock a wall down. Somebody say, that'll never happen. Yes, it will. If God wants it to, yes, it will. Yes, it will. Well, my goodness, look where we're at today. That's what I'm saying. Look where we're at today. And let your mind think just a minute where we might go, Steph. Where we might go. This county needs this church. And this church needs this county. We need to be growing in the Lord. Future. Vision. Thinking about what God might do. What God wants to do. What's God want to do? God wants to save souls. How do you save souls? You win them to Jesus. You get them in a house of God like this. And they hear the gospel and they feel his presence and his power. That's how we know we're doing the right things. God's on our side. Amen. Amen. I said it last week. God's on our side because we're on his side. And somebody say, well, TJ, you may not see this wall come down. I might not. I believe the next preacher here, whoever he might be, the next pastor, whoever he might be, he might see it. I know my dad, I'll be honest with y'all, when we built this one here, my dad didn't think he'd see it paid off, did he, Pop? Really? Didn't think he'd live long enough to see it paid off. I got a feel, he almost didn't, by the way. He got real close. But I think my dad's going to see it paid off. I think my dad's going to see it paid off. Why? Because we're obedient. Because we're obedient. Because we love God. Because we're filled with men and women that love God and want to stand in the midst of the worst time we've seen in America in church history. We are one of those churches. We've been chosen by God. His hand has been upon us for just such a time as this that we will stand Others may fall by the wayside. Guess what? Not us. You believe that? Not us. We're going to stand. You can call me after a while and encourage me. Uplift me. Call the deacons. Hey, call the deacons and uplift them and encourage them. Try that. Call the deacons and uplift them and encourage them. They need it. I need it. Shirley, the worship leader, needs it. Josh, the school director, needs it. You as the laity, I try to give it to you every Sunday. I try to encourage, uplift, bless you in the name of the Lord. I've got messages on my mind that's coming that's not going to be as fun as this one, but this one is fun. Be obedient. Follow the Lord. He'll bless and keep and sustain you. Just stay with Jesus and stay with this church. As a, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. She told me I could. Brother Brian, his wife, first name, Rachel. I wasn't about to try to say it on my own. Those of you that know me know I'm awful with names. It wasn't long ago, Sister Rachel walked by me at the back door. She said, boy, I'm glad I stuck it out. I'm glad I stuck it out. You know what I said? Y'all know what I said. I said, I'm glad I stuck it out. I'm glad. I, and one day, I said it too. We're going to walk through the portals of glory, and we're going to be glad, Sister Brooke, that we stuck it out. I tell you what, we're going to be glad. But until then, we're going to stick it out right here. Amen. Ain't we? We're going to invite people. We're going to encourage people. We're going to try to do our best with this COVID-19 thing going on. We're going to try to respect others. Those that choose to wear a mask, you are respected. Those of you that don't, you are respected. If you come to this altar, I done said it, and you don't want a lot of people crowding up on you, throw both your hands up or even better than this. If that's how you feel, get with me or a deacon, and after church, we will pray with you. We will pray with you. That all right? Because I know some people might be uncomfortable. You know the one thing I love about our church? You feel comfortable here don't you? You feel comfortable. You might be one here that's a little uncomfortable, and then God unctions you to come to the altar, and you think, oh my goodness, I'm going to the altar. I'm a little uncomfortable. Hey, God will take care of us. God will bless you. We just want to do the right things. We want to be obedient. We want to love each other. Obedience will lead to opportunity. I love that. 
I'm glad the Lord reminded me of that. You know, I was telling Brother Shirley in closing. There was a time not so long ago in my life. I'd be back here teaching Sunday school. Man, I love my Sunday school class. I say mine, our class. I love that class. We gather in there, and, and, and not so awful long ago, there was probably 25, 26 men be in there for Sunday school class. We was getting to the point where they's like, let's move out to the gym. I said, oh, no, I done been out there. That's the wilderness. <laughs> I done been out there. I'm telling you. I started that class out there, and I tell you what, I about give up on that class. And, and I remember the Lord was like, what are you doing? I ain't done with this class yet. You just stay and read and study while next thing I know, that thing started growing unbelievably. But what I'm getting at is I would teach Sunday school class back here to 25 Christian men. But in my obedience unto God, I would get up from that class. I'd go out and get in my truck, and I'd leave this church. And I'd be driving off to another county to go preach at a little old church with seven or eight members. And I remember thinking, God, I'd just love to just stay right here at Belmont. But, but you know what? We're supposed to be obedient. Be obedient. Be obedient to God. And guess what happened? Through my obedience and through this church, and I don't know how it all worked out, folks. But now, guess what? I get to teach the class, Brother David, to about half that number and then come out here and preach to you. That's the Lord. So I tell you this. I don't know what the calling on your life is. I don't know. Some of y'all are preachers. I know that. Some of y'all are singers. We know that. But some of y'all, I know this, some of y'all need to be more obedient. And I can say that because I think we all need to be more obedient. We all do. We need to listen to the Lord. You ever thought about this? And I'm trying to close, I promise you. When you pray, how much time do you spend listening? We pray. We get on our face before God and we pray. We ask God for this, that, and the other. Sometimes it's what we need. Sometimes it's what we want. But I want to ask you this morning, how much time have you spent listening to God? Take a little time and just be quiet in yourself. And I know that's hard to do. It's hard to do, but you can do it. And listen to what God wants for you. You know, we've been praying about this at Belmont for a while. We want a piano player. We want a piano player. I told Shirley this morning, I said, we may have to do like the story I heard of a man. And there was two men. They were farmers. And it was dry. And they was getting ready to put their crops out. But they was worried because it was so dry, Brother Randall. They were, they were worried about putting this crop out. Brother Randall might have been the one who told me this story. I can't remember. But anyway, these two men were praying for rain. We're praying for a piano player. We're praying for that, ain't we? There's a bunch of us are. Well, these two farmers... One of them got up the next morning after praying all night, and he went to plowing his field. The other one stayed in the house and watched the other one work. Which one of those two do you believe had the faith to believe rain was coming? The one that was preparing the field for it. I told Shirley this morning, maybe we just need to set a piano back up here. Just set one back up here. And I'm not speaking that. I've just got faith to believe that God is going to send us what we need. We need a piano player. Let's stand together this morning. Choir, come ahead. If you need prayer this morning, we talked about it in the back. We want, we want to do things in accordance to the best of our ability. If you're a little bit uncomfortable, wear a mask as you come to the altar. Some of you that have your mask, if you want to come and pray with them, there ain't nothing wrong with putting your mask on. We've said it here, and we're going to keep saying it. it does, it's not a measure of our faith, this mask issue, folks. As Brother Roger likes to say, sometimes we just need to do what's necessary and be respectful of others in every way, shape, and form that we can. I love that our church is, is, is the way it is. If you need prayer this morning, you come and let us pray with you. Let's sing.